Hi. Do we celebrate Environment Day every year? Did we celebrate it this year? I'm sure most of us look forward for June 5th to be planting saplings and looking forward every year to be planting more saplings. But should we be doing that only on Environment Days? Shouldn't we be worried more about nature every now and then? I am sure the COVID-19 or this virus has taught us much more. And one of the blessings that we have is that man has turned to nature. Today, I would like to bring you all to a short story written by Jean Giono, a French author about a man who planted trees. This was not the trees which he planted on every environment day, but rather we see a man who planted trees every day and as a result you can see what happened at the end of the short story. Welcome you all to the short story by Jean Giono. The, Ma the Man Who Planted Trees by the French author Jean Giono. What about this story? This particular story was published in 1953. The story was initially written by uh, Giono in French, but the first publication came out in 1953, a translated version which was translated by Peter Doyle. And it was this English version which came about uh, before the French version. Now, you, if you can uh, look at the story, the story, uh, though it is published in 1953, the setting of the story takes us to 1913, right before World War I. Now, for many years, this particular story was considered to be an autobiographical story and most of them thought or most of his audience thought that the narrator was Giono himself and the shepherd who was being mentioned here was an, uh, had an autobiographical effect as well. Uh, but it was very later, much later that he revealed the truth to his audience and he did mention in one of his interviews that this has no autobiographical elements. This is definitely a fictional character. But he wanted to continue this autobiographical elements as was considered by the audience and he did not reveal it in the beginning because what he intended was that everyone would be building trees. And he, and he really liked the idea of, uh, idea of uh, planting trees. And this is the reason as to why he did not reveal it at the beginning and it was only after several years, after several uh, translations which uh, came, uh, came across that he revealed that this does not have any autobiographical elements but rather this is just a fictional character. And um, the English translation was written by Peter Doyle and as I've mentioned this is uh, Peter Doyle's work which came about uh, much before the, uh, the French version. Now let's have a very closer look at the story. The story starts in 1913. The narrator of the story is on a hiking to the Alps and during his hike he is out of water and he reaches a desolate valley. Now when he reaches this desolate valley he realizes that he is very thirsty and he is in need of water. He looks around, he finds absolutely a, a dry land. No civilization and he's been hunting here and there to find at least something that would quench his thirst. But all his search was in vain. 
as he moves across he sees a shepherd and it is the shepherd who is able to find him a spring and as a result he is able to quench his thirst now what about the shepherd the shepherd a widowed man has been living in this valley for several years this is an abandoned valley absolutely treeless absolutely lifeless and this man he wakes up every day and makes sure that he plants a corns now what are a corns i'm sure most of you would have watched the uh, movie ice age haven't you seen uh, the squirrel in there haven't you seen a corn that he picks up that is he a corn now the shepherd plants a corns every day and before he plants them he is very careful he is very particular in separating the good ones and the bad ones and it is his duty he feels that it is his duty that he plants 100 acorns a day the narrator of the story finds this quite amusing and he believes that the shepherd has something to tell him and as a result he stays with the shepherd for a few days and it is while he stay that he realizes that the shepherd has 30 sheep he is also planting a corns and birches saplings of birches now after a point of time you see that there is no contact of the narrator with the shepherd a few years later after the world war i told you that this was the st- story is set before world war 1 so the narrator happens to be uh, in one of the uh, world wars and he is completely desolate he is hopeless of the whole situation he's frustrated and he he wants to make sure that he he comes and sees the shepherd now much later after the world war after the whole uh, the civilization is affected by this um, the world war the narrator comes back to the shepherd to the alps you can see that the shepherd is no more a shepherd but he is into bee making so he's become a bee maker now why is it that he got rid of his uh, of his sheep he realized that these sheep were actually eating up all his acorns and birches that he has been planting and this is the reason as to why he switched from the shepherd to a bee maker now he is into this bee making as a result there is life there are springs and in about 10 to 15 years time you can see that there are people in this desolate valley i told you in the beginning that this was just a desolate valley a man who's been planting a corns few years later all these grows and then slowly you can see that there is life and there is people out here to the extent that the french authority that the french authorities says that this natural forest has to be protected and this natural uh, forest none of them knew that the shepherd was behind this natural forest and m- after the world war they also feel that this environment this natural forest has to be protected and the authority starts protecting this this natural the so called natural uh, forest the narrator makes it a point that he visits this shepherd every year and in one of his journey the narrator tells his friend about this natural forest so remember it is only the readers the narrator and the friend who knows 
that this natural forest belongs to the shepherd. And it is the shepherd's single-handed, effortless journey where he transforms this desolate valley to a natural forest. This is what you can see in this story. In 1945, uh, the, sh the narrator comes to visit uh, the shepherd again. He's quite tired and in 1947, he gets a news that in 1947, he gets a news that he passes away, the shepherd passes away in hospice. This is a nutshell of the whole story, the man who planted trees. Look at the title. There is no name given to the man out here. In fact, if you look at the short story, there is no name which is mentioned in the beginning of the story, not even in the middle of the story, but towards the end of the story, we get to know that this shepherd is Eliseard Bufire. Eliseard Bufire is a name of the shepherd. Now, why do you think he was not given a name? Do you think he didn't have an identity? Well, it was not the name which had to be mattered, but rather it was the deed of this person, of this shepherd, which was mattered much more than his name or his true identity. Nobody knew that it was the shepherd who was behind this natural forest. It's only the narrator who knew and much later the friends and we as the readers. See how drastic steps he would have taken. He would have had bad climates. Most of the saplings would have, uh, would have uh, fallen apart. There might be times when he had bad situations as well. But yet, it was his constant effort that made him, finally made him to realize that he is the backbone of this natural forest. I'm sure he was not looking for rewards. If he was aiming at the rewards, he would not have definitely brought this idea of a natural forest. He worked because that gave him peace. It is this association of man with nature which gave him inner peace. I told you that he was a widow, widower. Though he lived in solitude, this did not concern him at any sorts in him producing these saplings or in him planting these saplings. And as a result, you can see that there is life out here. There is life, there is people. You, uh, if you can look at the end of the story, there are almost 10,000 people living in this desolate valley. So what are the main themes or what do we understand from this story? A selfless man, a committed man, a patient man. It is these qualities in him which made him work hard in order to bring about the natural forest. If he had waited every environment day, if he had waited for rewards, if he had waited for the French authorities to acknowledge him, this would have never taken place. And this is the reason as to why you can see that the man, as mentioned in the title, is not given a name until the end of the story. And it's only at the end of the story we get to know that he is Elziard Bufaya. And what else can you see? The relationship with, uh, with uh, the nature and man. The relationship between nature and man. The man who did not have a family found life in nature. The narrator who was depressed by the after effects of war found nature to his solace. This is what nature can do to human beings. Every other day you can see that the flowers fade, the trees shed their leaves and every day there is a new beginning. 
It's this new beginning of nature which teaches man that never to go depressed but uh, never to go depressed but rather come up in life. Do not wait for any rewards but keep loving what you do. As a result, what can you find? You can find a new life blooming. This is what the story the man who planted trees has to tell us. What else can you find here? You can also see that this was a very simple act. There wasn't much money which was involved here. He got these accounts from another valley during his journey and he kept it quite safe so that one day he would have thought that you know he could have he could plant it elsewhere and as a result you see that he is doing a very simple act and as a result he becomes very closely associated to nature. This story has not only influenced the readers, nor the narrator, nor the friend, because the friend did say that he would help out in the years to come with the French authorities to maintain this natural forest. But it's not only them who has been influenced, but after Giono's story, the man who planted trees, in real, the French authorities were influenced by the story and they did take up acts on conserving nature, conserving the forest. The natural forest, which we owe much to the shepherd, without even him realizing that he did a very thoughtful deed to the generations to come. Shouldn't we be thinking about our coming generations? Shouldn't we be bothered about what is happening around us, especially with nature? Should we really wait for the rewards to even plant a sapling? Or should we be waiting every other year? I think this is just a small act that everyone could start at home. Wherever we are, just take time to be closely associated with nature. You can see that there is life out there. You can see that it would spread happiness. You can see that there is no more solitude. Why? Because nature tells you to be cheerful every other day. And it is this cheerful nature in this man, though he did not have much to talk. You can see, if you can read the story, he does not have uh, much conversations with the narrator. He does not talk at all. Just here and there, few words. But rather, it was much more than his preaching. It was his practice which created this natural forest. So shouldn't we be also practicing rather than preaching? Isn't that what this man has to tell us? The man without a name, Giona does not give him a name even in the title. Why? Because it's his deeds which matters much more than his, uh, much more than the identity of this person. So we have to make sure that we go back to nature. If we haven't started yet, this is a time. Better late than never. Thank you.